So welcome to the Clearview Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Sean Drazen. I'm starting a new series called The Videographer Playbook, where I discuss topics, trends, and pretty much anything in the, 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 the video industry. So this is episode one of the series. Let's get to it. So basically, I just want to get on here and talk about, you know, stuff in the uh, the, the video industry, uh, just small little bits, eight to nine minutes, nothing major, hit you with like three a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So be on the lookout for that. Um, the first topic I want to talk about is chat GPT. So everybody's been talking about chat GPT, man. I've, I've used it. I've, I've had some success using it. Uh, I've got meal plans off of it. I got workout plans off of it. I've got inspiration, uh, writer's block, you know, uh, it helps with writer's block when you're thinking about content ideas, just it's all kind of crazy stuff. Like AI has hit the world by storm and everywhere you look, especially on Instagram and TikTok, where I'm on all the time, you see people coming up with these new sites like this site, this site, this could do this, this could do this, like this podcast we're doing right now, there's something that could chop up. Uh, little short form clips for this long form content on YouTube. I could have the short form clips on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube shorts, and I could just throw it on this software and it'll cut it up for me, which is crazy. But this is the world we live in right now. But the reason I bring up chat GPT right now is uh, I just, uh, I have put, I have put a prompt in and they're called prompts that when you kind of ask it questions. So I, I, I asked a prompt one day and I said, what are the top five reasons to be a videographer in 2023, you know? So I wanted to break down some of the stuff that they brought up and see if it's, if it's true or not. Right. All right. So the first one is there's a growing demand for video content. So video content has become increasingly popular in the recent years. And the trend is expected to continue to grow in the coming years. As more businesses and individuals turn into video content to promote their products and services, there'll be a growing demand for skilled videographers. Now, that means there's a lot of demand for videos. So being a person who makes them is a pretty good idea. So, yeah, I do think that there's a high demand for videos and there's a, 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 a big community right now that's doing it themselves from their phone. So even though there's a growing demand for video content, sometimes the uh, still trying to search out clients and still trying to differentiate yourself from other videographers, it, it still boils down to that. Now, there is a, there is a high demand, though, uh, but not all companies are going are gonna to want to spend that money on marketing, you know, so... I feel like there's a is a growing demand for it. You know, I've been in the game for over 14 years, and I feel like there's always been a growing demand for it. But that's just me, though. I'm being biased on my side of the fence. Like, hey, you need video. So I don't know if there's a growing demand, but there is always a demand for video content. All right, so number two, diverse range of opportunities. So videography is a versatile field that offers a range of opportunities from shooting commercials and music videos to documentaries to corporate training videos. This diversity can provide a videographer with a range of experiences and the opportunity to specialize in a particular niche. So meaning there are many different kinds of videos to make. So it's a job with a lot of options and I feel like it's always been like that. Me personally, I've had a diverse portfolio my whole career. Now I've done music videos. I've done a little bit of weddings. I've done real estate. I've done uh, products uh, videos. I've done corporate videos. I've done events. I've done sporting events. Like I've done everything, speaking events. Like there's, you know, there's pretty much nothing that I haven't done. So. And the reason why I'm saying like it's always been like this, because I put in the prompt to put the top five reasons to be a videographer in 2023. And so I wanted to differentiate from prior years. However, this is what they gave me. Right. Uh, but there is a lot of stuff out there you can find to, to find your niche is something that you're passionate about and you're good at it. 
and there's a good result, you know? So yeah, uh, if you niche down to real estate videos, right? There's a high demand, number one, and number two, there, you know, there's always someone trying to move into a house. There's always gonna be another realtor going through class, going, they're gonna always build that companies coming and going. So, you know, there is, there is opportunities between that niche. And so there's always different kind of, of, of opportunities everywhere. So yeah, definitely when you niche down, it could, uh, it could, it could bring you even more uh, clientele once you niche down. So, you know, that was a good one. Uh, number three, creative expression. So video is an art form that allows for creative expression, combining technical skills with storytelling to create compelling visuals that can convey emotion and capture in the imagination of the viewers. So basically making videos is an art and it allows people to be creative and tell stories. So yeah, like I know a lot of people have been creative and they express their creativeness up of stuff like TikTok and just social media in general, right? But when TikTok came out, you saw a bunch of people that were more funnier than the people you see in movies. They were more creative than the people you see on TV. And so it expanded and, and it, and it, and it uh, exposed a lot of different people and it gave people a lot of opportunities. So it does give you an expressive creativeness to do videos, right? And so... I look at it from when I used to do music videos, right? When I did music videos, I could be as creative as I want. However, then I go and do like a corporate video or a, a talking head video. You really can't be super creative because it has to be professional. And so you definitely want to have some kind of outlet that, you know, uh, has a creative expression to it. And, and, don't get me wrong, you can be very creative at any type of uh, niche that you're in, right? Whether it's boring, you know, talking head videos or corporate dry or real estate, just going through houses, you can still be creative, right? But there's, I've always seen that balance though. It was like, okay, well, I could be super creative in this. So it's always good to get a niche that you could be really creative at. And that's why me personally, I like fast paced videos because it reminds me of music videos and um, like fitness and like cars. And, and you know, I like, I, I just like upbeat music with my videos. And even when I'm, I just edited an event today and I just kept that pace with the, with the uh, actual song that was playing in the background and it was hype to me and I got really creative, but there was really, you know, it was just following an event. You got to get creative anywhere. So there's always going to be a creative expression. Yes, definitely. I like that one. Number four, flexibility. Many videographers work on freelance and contract and contract basis, which can provide flexibility and the opportunity to work on a variety of projects. This can allow for a better work-life balance and the ability to pursue personal projects and passions. So many people who make videos work for themselves, right? And that could be way more flexible than a regular job. So let me go back to the first. It says top five reasons to be a videographer. And I feel like that's a number one reason right there, the flexibility. Because my life has extremely changed since I just went full-time as a, a full-time filmmaker, like Parker Walbeck uh, would say, right? I was working maybe you know, eight to 10 hours a day, give or take, um, pretty much my whole twenties and a little bit of my thirties. However, like five, I believe like five years ago, I quit working and I went full time. And yes, it was hard at first, but the flexibility, like if I wanted to take a trip, I took a trip. If I wanted to take a day off, I took a day off. If I had to take my wife to the doctor, I took her to the doctor. The flexibility part was what I wanted in my life. And so I bought me some time back and some, you know, I was making, I made a hundred, a hundred thousand in 2021. However, I did not work 40 hours a week. I did not put in those hours um, that you would do on a full-time nine to five gig, right? So when you do have the flexibility of being a videographer and you're successful at it, it is truly, truly 
like rewarding. So when you do think about being a videographer in like in 2023, that would be my number one thing, flexibility. Like it just, it's flexible. And say, say uh, I have a client that wants to shoot on Monday, but I have uh, that already booked. Maybe I might hit the, the person up that I had booked and see if they would change a little bit, give it a little bit more flexibility, right? And I can bump them to Tuesday and bring that uh, the client that was asking about it into Monday. So you really have flexibility to play with your schedule. You don't have to work these long hours. However, you have to prioritize time blocking. So your flexibility can only be as good as your time blocking manage or your time management skills are. So definitely put that into consideration when you're thinking about the flexibility. You just can't wake up at like two in the afternoon every day and oh, I'm flexible. No, you have to prioritize your time management skills and put apply that to your business and then you'll have the flexibility that you need. Number five, technic technic oh my, that's a big word. Uh technolog technological advancements. I can't believe I can't say that. Technological advancements. The advancements in technology have made videography more accessible with high quality equipment, becoming more affordable and editing software becoming more user friendly. This can allow for more individuals to enter the field for and for experienced videographers like myself to stay up to date with the latest technology. So basically technology is getting better and cheaper, which makes it easier for people to make videos and stay up to date. Now that's a gift and a curse. I will tell you right now, cause I started making videos maybe in 2005. I had a little Sony handy cam and it had the like little tape still. And it, you know, there was no resources anywhere to how to learn how to you know, get to the next level. There was no Lex level. It was just like, hey, you know, you went to school and then you had a job or a career. There was no entrepreneurship really in, in video like that and well in front of my face. And so, you know, the technology and the, the accessibility has definitely, definitely changed since I've started. So, you know, kids nowadays, they get out of high school or even still in, or in high school. And I, I listen to a lot of podcasts of uh, videographers and they tell their story and they say, Hey, what, what, uh, when'd you start? And they said, well, my mom bought me this. And when I was 16, I'm like, Whoa, 16. Like I didn't get my first like actual DSLR until I was like 31. So, you know, the technology, the technology advancements, technological, technological advancements are very high right now. You can go to Best Buy and buy something for like $200. Matter of fact, you can just use your phone actually. And well, these, you know, they're more than $200, but you, but everybody has one, right? So the, the editing software, it comes easily. We had to go find that stuff. We had to go crack the codes. We had to do a lot of stuff differently, but, uh, nowadays you just have the access to the pay to subscription you're right there with your fingertips on your, on your, on your computer. And you can transfer it from this computer to this computer, whatever. And they have editing, they have editing apps right here on your phone. Now, all you have to have is a, uh, uh, you know, on this iPhone is an Apple account and, you know, subscription plan, and you can use it for free, actually, you know, like cap cut and stuff like that. So there is no excuse no more before it was like, Hey man, I, I can't afford a $2,000 camera. And when you did, you were like, Oh man, I'm, you know, this is my prized possession. And although I still, you know, my last camera, the a seven three that we're using right here, it was $2,000. And, you know, I, at the time I could afford it. And so it was like, you know, a little bit different from, you know, back in the day. So now in 2023, that is like a, the technological advancements make it easier for someone to be a videographer. And that being said, you know, I had to do my shameless plug. If you are looking to be coached or you are looking to get into the videography field and you need some help step by step, I can help you. I just put together my ebook called Videographer Playbook, the same name as this podcast. So don't you can't forget it. Two and two match up. You can hit the link in the description and it will take you right to it. It's only $27. I'm actually having a, a course that comes with it uh, soon here and I do have a masterclass starting in June. 
that will take people on group online coaching and take you step by step, a five week program that is going to entail every little step from making a, your, your purchasing a camera to getting your retainer client or making 10 grand a month or whatever. It's going to take you A to Z how to build that video business. So definitely take advantage of that. Uh, links in the link is link is going to be in the description. And so, yeah, I just wanted to go over those five reasons to be a videographer in 2023, according to Jack, chat GPT. And I feel like, you know, a lot of them were pretty good. Like if I wanted to be a videographer, there's growing demand. Yes. Two, there's a diverse range of opportunities. Yes. Number three, creative expression. If I'm creative, yes, it's a good way to, you know, express yourself. Five or four, the flexibility, no doubt. In the in the five, that then the technology, the technology advancements, absolutely. So ChatGPT, I give an A plus on this one. You know that's uh, pretty spot on. And if anybody wants to to learn, like I said, that those five, those five reasons intrigue you, let me know. You know you can email me or or DM me at you know on on Instagram at Sean Clearview S E A N Clearview. There you go. All right, so we'll holler at you guys next time. We'll see you in a couple of days.